Ann Arbor Inclusive is produced in part with the Ann Arbor Commission on Disability Issues and CTN. The views and opinions expressed in the show do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of the Commission or CTN. For more information about the Commission on Disability Issues, visit a2gov.org slash disability resources. If you have program topic suggestions, please email a2disabilityissues at gmail.com. Hi, I'm Tom Holtland with Ann Arbor Inclusive. Ann Arbor Inclusive is a program of the Ann Arbor Commission on Disability Issues. Today's show is going to be uh, very cool. It's uh, an exciting program right in our neighborhood in Ann Arbor uh, called Therapeutic Riding Inc or better known as TRI. So TRI's mission is to provide a therapeutic environment through horseback riding and other activities for people with disabilities and other challenges. Uh, they offer many types of uh, equine assisted activities year round. Um, they have many opportunities to get involved with the robust staff and volunteer base. They are changing lives in real time. Can you imagine the thrill of mounting a horse and being guided around a uh, practice ring, something that maybe your disability never allows you to explore or even uh, dream about. Um, I imagine that's life-changing for a lot of their participants. So uh, that's what today's show is all about, learning more about uh, how they are changing lives and so forth. And, um, you know, perhaps you'll be inspired to be a participant or a, uh, a volunteer for them, or even a donor, because you see the value in this program for people with disabilities. So today I'm joined by Jennifer Meyer, and she's going to um, answer a lot of our questions, and um, and uh, we'll, we're going to go from there. So Jennifer, thanks so much for joining us today. Hi, Tom. Thanks for having us. For sure. So before we get into some specific uh, um, questions about TRI and what they do, what is your position and what do you do there? Um, I am, I, as, if, as with the many nonprofits, I uh, wear many hats here at TRI. Um, first and foremost, I'm our education and outreach coordinator, um, meaning, meaning that I get to do wonderful things like, like interviews here with you today, um, making sure that the community is aware of the work that we do at TRI. Um, I am also one of our PATH certified therapeutic riding instructors. Um, PATH is the Professional Association of Therapeutic Horsemanship, um, and they issue safety standards and instructor certifications to make sure that what we do here at TRI is, is as safe a, as possible and also operating by the highest standards. Um, in addition to, to being a PATH certified instructor, I also hold a certification as a para dressage coach. And I know we're going to talk a little bit about para dressage later, so I won't get into it too much right now. Um, but essentially, that allows me to coach athletes with disabilities who are pursuing para equestrian sports. So, so those are the, the three jobs <laughs> that, that I have yeah. here. Yeah, that sounds familiar. I'm very familiar with nonprofits and how they work. Yeah. Um, because you're, you're on Morgan Road, right? Yeah, we are. We're, we're um, off of uh, Morgan Road, just off of Platte Road. Yeah, yeah, you're not far from, uh, from where I work. So um, let's talk now about TRI. And in your, um, in your best summary, what does TRI do? Um, well, quite, quite simply, we teach people with disabilities and other challenges how to ride and work with horses. Um, we serve uh, people with disabilities that, that you may have heard of that are pretty common, such as ASD, Down syndrome, or cerebral palsy. Um, but we also serve people who may have mental health issues, those battling cancer, or um, those with maybe age-related disabilities. Uh, so we have a wide variety of people who can benefit from our services. Um, essentially, in addition to the, the mission statement that you spoke about at the beginning of the show, uh, we essentially believe that people of all abilities should have access to, to sports and active recreation. And this is a big one, especially if you, you think about people um, who may have a pretty severe disability. Opportunities for sport or opportunities for, for movement may be pretty difficult and, and hard to come by. Um, so simply by virtue of us putting, putting them on the back of a horse, 
uh, we can offer movement, we can offer stretching, we can offer an increased cardio, um, all of that stuff. Plus, plus it's fun. <laughs> it's something yeah. that, that people do want to, to want to come and do. Uh, so that's, that's why we, we do what we do here. Um, just operationally, we're a 501c3 nonprofit. Uh, horses eat a lot, and they are. Well, I was going to ask you about. I was going to ask you about uh, the cost yeah. in taking care of just one horse. Yeah, yeah. So the, the cost to take care of just one horse is is about six thousand dollars a year, um, and that's everything from from feeding, veterinary expenses, making sure their feet are in great shape. Our horses are very well cared for here. Um, because they do such an important job. So, yeah. so they deserve it um, and they, they get the, the best of care. Um, but but the, the cost of, of all of that is subsidized by, by a really generous community of donors. Um, and then also over 250 uh, volunteers who support this program and really make what we do possible. Everyone yeah. in that team of, of volunteers and donors, we're all working toward that, that goal of helping people with disabilities pursue their goals with horses and, and equestrian sports. So uh, is there any disability that you've had to say you can't participate as far as uh, riding, getting on a horse and riding? Yeah, there are some, there are some. We have, uh, again, a wide variety of people that we are able to serve. Um, unfortunately, the, there are some instances where it's simply not safe for us to do so. The, the fundamental issue is that horses, regardless of what we do, horses move you. Um, yeah. so, so there are some certain spinal cord injuries, some, some hip and joint injuries or, or issues where it simply may not be safe for us to, to put a participant on the back of a horse. And we do follow those path standards um, to make sure safety is always our highest priority. We, we don't wanna cause any further harm or injury. Um, but if we cannot put somebody on a horse for, for riding, we do offer ground lessons. Um, participants can come learn how to groom horses, how to feed them, how to care for them, um, all of the equipment that goes into working with horses and also um, working with them on the ground if they're able, leading, lunging, um, and, and other activities where they can still be involved in the, in the wonderful world of equestrian, but maybe, maybe not ride. Well, I can see the benefit to that because I think many of us, unless you really don't like horses, um, get this when we're around them, just get uh, overtaken by their beauty and yeah. their size and just how they move and uh, even, you know, how they interact when they're standing still. Mm -hmm. um, they're so expressive and you just want to kiss that big nose of theirs, right? Yeah. So I can imagine that it'd be very uh, fulfilling to even do that. Yeah. Yeah, and there's, you know, pe people realize really quickly how, how sensitive these, these seem, these, they're big animals, right? And you wouldn't think at the, at the beginning that they're very sensitive, but they're, they're very attuned to your body language and your attitude and your approach with them. So you can learn a lot about how little it takes sometimes to communicate with an animal of, of that size. They're pretty intuitive, so, so a lot of fun for a lot of people. They're very trainable, right? Yes, yeah, horses are, are highly, highly trainable. Um, they, they learn to respond to very subtle cues um, from riders and also very subtle cues from handlers. Uh, just little shifts in your body weight that me will mean something to them if you're riding them and then also if you're working with them on the ground, um, where you position your, your body means a lot to them. So, so they learn, plus, plus they're highly food motivated. <laughs> For the most part, yeah. um, so you can teach them a lot using using treats and positive reinforcement, um, like, like almost any animal in the kingdom. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. We'll work for food. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I, I was saying any animal is food motivated. Yes, yeah. Yeah, not tra not as trainable as horses though. <laughs> um, so that kind of leads me into my next question: um, Why horses? Sure. As far as that's the, you know, why does it work? Yeah. Well, like I said, they're, they're a big expensive animal. So, so it's sometimes hard for people to understand why, <laughs> why we deal with them, right? When, when there may be other options out right. there. Right. But, but horsemanship and equestrian sports, um, by their very nature, are, are so highly adaptable. Uh, because, like, like we just talked about, horses are very trainable. 
And for the most part, they really do want to please. They want to work with you. They want to be part of that human horse herd, if you will. Yeah. Um, so they can be trained to adapt, accept and adapt to a wide variety of different rider aids, for example. Um, you know, if a rider is unable to perhaps use their left leg. Um, uh, several of my para dressage riders then just simply use uh, a long uh, dressage whip to help support that leg and, and say, look, you know, this is, this is taking the place of my leg. Um, so that's just one example of, of how they can adapt. Um, the, other, the other big benefit is equestrian sports are really more of a skill balance and communication game than uh, a strength and speed game, right? right? So, so horses really do make up for a lot of what we might lack <laughs> in, yeah. in athletic ability sometimes. I mean, I've, I've been riding my whole life and I, I can't say that I'm, I'm not uh, that great of an athlete in terms of running or, or things like that. So, so they really, really, really do make up for a lot. Yeah. Um, the other big, big thing that I've found really exciting about it, especially for, for the riders coming up through our ranks, is the larger equestrian community provides opportunities at every level. I mean, you can participate, like we said, everything from, from grooming and simply enjoying hanging out with horses, yeah. um, all the way through to um, there's opportunities to compete at the Paralympics and the World Equestrian Games. Really? For, for equestrians. Have you trained uh, any Paralympians? Um, could you repeat that question? I'm sorry. So have you trained any eventual, they, they eventually went to the Paralymp Paralympics? I per we personally have, have not at, at Therapeutic Riding. We have had have, have several who have gone on to have competitive uh, careers after they've sort of fledged from our program. Okay. We do now have some who have um, some competitive ambitions in, in paradressage specifically. So, so we're going to see where that takes us. But, but our role here is to get people started in the, the grassroots of the sport and to essentially provide an experience with, with really high quality facilities, instructors, and horses that are really on par with any able-bodied riding school. So a person with a disability can come here, they can learn the basic skills and get a really good start in, in their equestrian pursuits, whether it's just wanting to have fun with horses and, and continue that, or whether it is going on and, and competing in, in one of the various opportunities available in the horse world for people with disabilities. Okay, so now let's get specific yes. about some of the things I saw uh, on your website, which was the, um, USEF, uh, so it's USEF and USPEA, yeah. um, para, dressage, para Dressage Center of Excellence. Sure. Yeah, it's I a mean, mouthful, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Lots of letters there. So yeah. uh, TRI is a USEF, United States Equestrian Federation, and US Para Equestrian Association, uh, Para Dressage Center of Excellence. And we are one of only nine in the entire country. Um, that oh. hold that specific honor. Um, we received that honor in October of 2018, so just a couple years ago. Um, and and para dressage is just one equestrian sport pathway uh, for people with disabilities. Um, and the, the word dressage uh, comes from a French word for training, and it refers to the development of a horse and rider as a team resulting in balance and harmony, essentially. So, so dressage improves flexibility, strength, and accuracy for both the horse and the rider. And uh, riders compete in dressage in a test. Um, and it's performed to demonstrate the, the training accomplishments at whatever level they're, they're working at. Um, so riders ride specific movements. They get scored on each movement. And um, dressage shows are a lot of fun. Riders receive feedback based on how well they performed each movement in their test. So um, can you tell us a little bit more about um, why you were awarded the, uh, Center, on, the Center for Excellence? Um, you know, what's involved in that and why are, you know, nine is a very low number when you're talking nationally. Mm -hmm. So you guys have really done a great job, but tell us what that means. Sure, sure. Yeah, it's it's kind of a it's kind of a big deal. But we were evaluated essentially based on our facility. Um, the facility that we are in right now was purpose built for us in 2010, and we purpose built it as an adaptive or therapeutic riding facility. So that means it's it's fully accessible. 
uh, for people with disabilities. We have a lift um, that helps us essentially transfer people straight from, from wheelchairs or walkers onto the back of a horse. Okay. Um, and then we also have uh, a heated indoor arena that allows people to, to ride and train year round, um, which in Michigan is, is no small feat when you're talking about essentially an outdoor sport. Um, so it was, it was awarded based on the quality of our facilities. Uh, the quality of our horses. I don't know if you peek behind me here. You see all these ribbons on the, the wall. I was um, going to ask you. Yeah, these are all ribbons that were, were earned uh, by our horses that are available for our, our program participants to ride. So they've, they're competitive horses at the local, local level um, and they know their stuff. So the quality of, of the horses allowed us to earn that distinction. And then also the, the staff credentials. As I mentioned before, um, all of our staff are, are highly trained equine professionals and, and uh, riding instructors first. Um, and they, the, the USDF and the USPEA looked at that and said, you know, you guys are well equipped to help uh, introduce people into the para dressage and para equestrian pipeline. Wow, that's great. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Yeah. So. Um, when, when, when I heard uh, para dressage, I thought, you know, in my world with a spinal cord injury, um, that para meant this is a paraplegic program uh, for, for people um, practicing and, and, and so forth. So can you tell us um, what that means, what the para means? Yeah, that's a really, that's a really common, <laughs> common misconception there when, when people hear the word para. So yeah. para essentially refers to parallel, um, and para dressage riders are held to the same training standards as those competing in, in able-bodied dressage or traditional dressage. Um, essentially, athletes with permanent physical disabilities are assigned com competition grades based on their functional abilities, and those grades uh, range from one through five. And that's an effort to make sure that athletes uh, with disabilities are competing uh, with and against those with similar physical abilities. So, so para is essentially parallel. Every dressage rider, regardless of their, their abilities, are expected to go out there and show that their horse is, is well-trained, um, responsive, supple, flexible, rhythmic in their movement. Um, the, the grade level just simply differentiates what type of test they might perform in, in competition, but the standards are, are all the same and they are very high. <laughs> um, yeah. so, so we train to all of the, those standards. Um, are, are your clients uh, or customers, uh, do, are they all people with disabilities or do you also run a program for, you know, kids or, you know, families or is it all dedicated to people with disabilities or not? Yeah, we uh, all of our clients have, have disabilities or, or some some form of, of a challenge, like I like I spoke about earlier. Yeah. Um, we are our facility was um, constructed at, on a, a, a land conservancy grant, the, the proper a property that we probably would have never been able to to get our hands on um, outside of this agreement. Allowed us to, to build our facility here um, to for mission driven uh, work. So 100% of our operations are, p are serving people with disabilities. Uh, we cool. don't at this time offer, offer any um, NEA programming outside of that. We're, we're full <laughs> with, yeah. with, uh, with serving the clients that we serve. So, um, and how yeah. long would it take someone like right now, say on Monday or whatever day of the week, uh, someone came in and I want to get involved. How long does it take between that and actually you know starting your lessons um yeah we, we do have a little bit of a, a wait list right now and that's because we run on um lesson sessions essentially so it takes a little while before we have a suitable opening um depending on on what your interests, skills and abilities are we have to find find the right spot for any participant coming into our program and make sure that we can safely serve serve you with the horses that might be available or, or the volunteers necessary. So there's a paperwork process and then that paperwork process is followed up by an in-person evaluation um, where again we, we assess and we set goals and we, we make plans and kind of discuss and make sure that this is the right activity 
for, for somebody coming into our program. Um, it, it does take, take a little bit. It's certainly not an instant come on in tomorrow uh, type scenario, but we work as possible to get, to get people off of that wait list. And again, make sure that we're doing it in, in as safe a manner as possible. Do people have to get a physician letter or? Yeah, that's part of our like paperwork that? process is, yeah. is we do ask that, that uh, physicians sign off um, and again, we're looking for a handful of, of conditions that may be contraindicated for participating in, in mounted equestrian activities. Okay. Um, so, so physicians sign off, there's an application, um, and then also that in-person evaluation. Okay. So um, as far as participants go, I know you wanted to talk about one or two of the, the folks, but you also brought video of um, one of your um, customers, one of your clients named Megan. Yeah. Yeah. So let's take a look at that video real quick and then we'll talk on the other side. Okay. Hi, my name is Megan and I have been riding at TRI for the past 16 years. I have ridden several different horses over the years, starting with Shaw, then Hannah, then Abel, and now Serena. I was really excited when TRI moved to their new facility to the heat environment I to ride all year long. I enjoy gaining new skills as a rider and most of all becoming more and more independent. and always coming up with new ideas to help me improve my riding, like modifying my syrups and reins. My goal right now is to ride in a paradise competition at Woodbine. I am really excited about this. Well, wow, that is a really cool video of uh, Megan. And what strikes me is that she's very happy. Yes. Um, she's very satisfied with, uh, with you guys and, her, and what she's doing there. And um, it just seems like at one point in the video where it's just very peaceful yes. and very serene and very therapeutic. Um, so tell us more about Megan. Um, yeah, Ma Megan's an incredible young woman, as I'm sure you saw on the video. Yeah. Um, Megan started riding with us when she was, I believe, uh, eight years old, um, just just a, a young person. And she has, we've watched her grow up in this program. She's she's shown up every year to to ride and and keeps learning and growing. And about three years ago, um, Megan decided that she would like to to pursue para dressage. Um, she got interested in the sport as we started offering some education materials about it. Um, and she started taking uh, para dressage lessons with me. And Megan has gone, and in the last probably three to four years, she's gone from needing support from a, a horse leader and potentially a sidewalker to riding completely independently. Um, she is now nationally classified as a grade one para equestrian. Um, so she is eligible to compete in para dressage. Um, Megan actually just had a fantastic training session last week where, where pieces are really starting to come together. And um, she and I are hatching plans uh, for her to do some recognized video competitions over the winter. And then hopefully um, in the spring and, and summer of, of next year, go out to some local uh, para equestrian uh, competitions. So, 
So Megan's tremendous. Uh, I know it looks very peaceful up there and very serene, but I, I'm sure Megan would tell you that she's working really hard <laughs> up there, and I know she is. Um, yeah. To do everything that's asked of in, in dressage. So. Yeah. She looks like a pro, <laughs> yeah. actually. So yeah. what's it what's it mean to you as a as an instructor as a as a um, key component to how this works? What's it mean to you to see either Megan or anyone first get up on a horse and their reactions to it and what it brings to to their life? What's your reaction to that? Um, it, that's a great question and. You know, every time I put somebody up on the horse on a horse for the first time, we get mixed reactions. Everything from "Oh my gosh, what have I gotten myself into?" Right. <laughs> you, this is the most amazing thing I've I've ever experienced in in my life. I uh, imagine. Regardless of, of how somebody reacts to it initially, um, to me, it always means opportunity, right? I I feel like there's there's I got into this business be, because I I saw uh, a chance for me to really make a difference in in people's lives and offer them access to a sport that i've had the pleasure of of being a part of for the last uh 30 years uh so it's an opportunity and, and every time you know you, you put somebody on the back of the horse for the first time you hope that they can see the opportunity that they have um by, by doing this whether it's simply again simply opportunity to have fun meet new people engage with volunteers or you know the opportunity to to continue to excel, continue to gain new skills, and, and maybe compete. Um, it, it opens a whole new world <laughs> for for everybody that we we put on the back of a horse, and and whatever whatever they choose to get out of it, or whatever their goals are, we can make that happen. Yeah, yeah. So uh, before we before we wrap up, how can somebody? Are you always looking for volunteers, or is there a point where you're all set, or you know, how can, uh, how can people get involved in whatever way that they, you know, can? Sure, yeah. So, so normally, if we wouldn't be in our, in our COVID situation at the moment, we would always be looking for volunteers. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we typically would be accepting volunteers year-round on a rolling basis. Our volunteer program, every volunteer in our program will tell you it's fun. <laughs> it's a blast. Uh, because volunteers get to work directly with with people as they as they ride as either sidewalkers or horse leaders um, and then our volunteer program is also really robust with education opportunities so you can come here with no horse experience whatsoever and work with us and take our training courses to, to learn as much as you want to learn and, and maybe eventually uh, come in and be a horse leader in our classes or assist with grooming horses or tacking horses before classes so, so normally, yes, volunteering is a great way to get involved. We uh, are right now running on a little bit, a little bit of uh, limited volunteer numbers. Yeah. And obviously, when when the COVID situation hopefully starts to ease up, we will we will be able to have that more robust volunteer program back. I think we're all operating under those restrictions, right? <laughs> Yes, yes. We we miss everybody. We have about 15 volunteers coming in regularly right now, and it's so good to see their masked faces <laughs> around the barn. But but yeah, if, if we have people out there who are willing to be a little patient with the volunteer program, you can always fill out an application on our website. Um, we'll just have to be in a holding pattern until we can safely bring in new volunteers to the program. Yeah, well, I really appreciate your time today. Uh, I knew I was going to like what we uh what what you had to say and it really sparks even my interest to come and see your facility when uh when you're allowing folks to do that but um it really is therapeutic um and it's very uh, i'm sure it's very cathartic but i really appreciate uh your time today that's it for today i'm tom holton with the ann arbor with ann arbor inclusive and we are a program of the Ann Arbor Commission on Disability Issues. We hope to see you next time on Ann Arbor Inclusive. Thank you.